Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're about to kick things off. We're just going to give everybody about uh, 60 to 120 seconds more, possibly, at the most to, to get everything started. But thanks again for joining. We'll be right with you. All right, I think I'm uh, going to just go ahead and get started and, you know, some people will be unfortunate to, to miss my intro at least, but I'll uh, get started anyway, at least the introduction. And then once, uh, you know, we get into the real demo, then we'll, you know, everybody else will probably be on that by then. So thanks again for joining today. We're, our folks today is in the next series, basically, of our WordPress webinars. You know, we've, you've had the opportunity, you might have been seen some of the first ones that are much more focused on you know the market opportunity the business side of things you know where what you can do with modern hosting and what the demand is and, and why you need to be focused on that today we're getting more into how to simplify it you know what are the challenges of today you know what what is shared hosting yeah basically what is it, what goes into managing shared hosting what goes into manage it you know from a wordpress cluster then we'll get into the solutions and that'll be theo theo you want to introduce yourself Hello everyone, <clears throat> thank you for attending the webinar. I will demonstrate you today the product. We will dip into technical uh, conversations as well. And I'm Theodoros Filipidis. I'm the strategic product manager of the Virtuos application platform for WordPress. And today with Patrick, we are going to present uh, to have this webinar with you. Thank you yep. again for attending. Thanks, Theo. And just take a step back. My name is Patrick Gillen, business development manager. You know, I'll definitely I'll, I'll go into the first few slides, get a little bit into, you know, where the opportunity is, you know, what you need to be thinking about, and then Theo will get into the solution itself. Oh, one last thing. If you have any questions at any time, just ask them. You know, I'll be monitoring everything, trying to see if it's something we want to address right away. Otherwise, we'll, you know, get to it at the end. So the first thing is, you know, today's and tomorrow's challenges, you know, what's going on, you know, for, you know, why do you want to make sure that you have the best solution possible? Why do you want to make sure that, that it's you know, optimized, it's giving you the customers everything they need? First thing is, you know, as an end user, you know, what's their perspective if something goes wrong? And, and that's brand damage. The last thing you want is, is people being upset because their website's not working, things aren't going wrong, it's going slow, it's not optimized. It's going to cause you know them possibly harm to their business, and then you know in the end possibly harm to you know, the actual hosting provider if they have that experience, especially if they start getting online and start making even more complaints. The right sizing problem, making sure that they have you know all of the you know what they need for their hosting platform. You know then you know losing premium opportunities. You know a lot of times you know people can simply grow out of you know the product that you may be offering. Then they they're gonna want you know faster you know basically things as they come up new we're gonna see more and more in the in the near future as far as you know expectations of of the evolution of of products and and that they want them fast and then the other thing is they don't necessarily the end user doesn't necessarily have the expertise to manage everything so that really falls on the, the lap of the provider and the last thing is you know focus on the scale and, and allow for the growth of their business and your business. From a service provider perspective, you know, we really look at this as, you know, you, you really need to be able to have, you know, decentralized infrastructure, you know, address all the traditional hosting issues as long as, you know, as well as the new issues. You try to, you know, avoid some of the time consuming operations, you know, and then the other thing is, again, you know, you got to be able to support the customer in their journey. You know, they, you know, there's a lot of focus as far as, you know, what their experience is and, you know, that comes from, you know, how they're getting you know, service and, and you really want to be there 
you know, really their, their expert that they can lean on. And so that's part, all part of the journey and giving them that product that, that they can grow with. Again, you know, then the next thing is, you know, how do you deliver these high available, you know, clusters? So it, it comes back again down to, you know, the scale, you know, being able to scale the product and then providing the opportunity for growth of your business. So what, what is it like to manage? Did you have a comment? And today we're facing uh, on the shared hosting server, we've seen some problems to, to deliver multiple websites and there are some operations, they are producing some issues. For example, we, we need expertise or special software for isolation resources between account and so we can avoid some noisy neighbors. But also there is a very big issue when as it's a single point of failure and this accommodates multiple projects when you need to, to have a, a software updates when they require some a reboot of the server and sometimes the server is having a downtimes for some hardware failures. We have a very big damage on our reputation of course and definitely in some cases it can take up to few hours for, for these websites to be recovered. And this, of course, it's, it's a big problem. And according to flexibility, uh, as it's a shared hosting and it's uh, not very flexible, you cannot proceed with the uh, live migrations, which, of course, is simplify the maintenance uh, operations and, of course, the quality of the service for the end users. And definitely, these shared boxes, they, they shared some specific software stacks which producing performance impact and, of course, or some security issues as well. And definitely all of this shared hosting management is decentralized. You need to manage multiple web hosts and, and multiple servers, which you do not have a centralized control and centralized observability. And all of this is, of course, have, it's producing time-consuming monitoring operations. And definitely it's hard to debug performance impacts that is being uh, occurred by different projects and websites. Thank you, Patrick. If you want to to note something as well, no, I think you covered that one well. I think that, that the main thing is, you know, it, it, it you know, definitely you know, we've covered in previous sessions, you know, the idea of shared hosting is not being the optimal solution for you know anybody who's serious about their website. But nonetheless, you know, I think this is a good slide to kind of cover what goes into it as far as you know what the needs are. Bottom line for the end user, they just want to be able to, you know, click a bu button, install, and make sure that it runs well. Um, this is, you know, so if you are just doing the basics, you know, this is what the basics are for shared hosting. Excellent. And <clears throat> for the next slide, we're now moving out a little bit of the traditional environments that it's for simple websites and we are going to modernize infrastructure which for nowadays we've seen more requests to be clustered and of course scalable environments and definitely this needs special expertise for the deployment and for the initial configuration but definitely it needs more time consuming and more operations to maintain and to to configure and to to keep it always updated and of course to to have it in in best grade performance with all the capable diagnostics in in respect of the software stacks for computing load balancing and definitely the database clusters and this is how it looks today how you what you need to do to deploy a cluster topology First of all, we need to set up an application delivery with for high availability and multiple load balancers for the entry point. And definitely after, we need to configure a special design to, to be cluster friendly, which means the application servers for the HP runtime, they need to scale and definitely they need to, to, to have a shared volume that going to be distributed for the shared files, for example, for WP content. And for sure, we need also uh, load balancers for the databases or some DNS round robin. We need to, to tune the databases. And of course, when we scale, we always need to go and retune the databases based on best practices for the optimal performance. And for sure, we also need to have some object caching so we can reduce the request to our database and improve significantly the performance and to reduce the resource consumption on our cluster and for sure we can need 
and we can leverage another technologies as well for example content delivery network so we we reduce as well and we make it more perform when we have static assets for example javascript or images on our cloud volume and we can leverage for example cluster fs or nfs pure nfs according to technology we have some performance impacts but as we configure a content delivery network we solving this problem automatically and of course we need to to have a control and and, uh, and to be confident how we we update the software stacks because it's easy to deploy but it's really more complicated and more complex to manage and to maintain these clusters and for this reason we're focusing not only how you deliver the clusters to your clients but how you simplify the whole operations we have built-in technologies for data operations for diagnostics and performance and definitely we have auto recovery technologies as well for for database recoveries and also for 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 the multi-region deployments if you want to have something more advanced and geo-distributed. I don't know, Patrick, if you want to, to cover this slide. Yeah, definitely. I think that, that you know those two cases, you know, like if you look at both of them, you know, what's what's really what are the you know you know the, the impact of them. You know, one, you have the risk of human error. So the idea is to you know try to take some of those those steps, you know, the steps of building the shared hosting and the and the clustered hosting out, you know, as far as you know the, the, the possibility of the human error and then the time consuming effort. You know, it's it's a lot to tweak it and continue to tweak it. And you know, a lot of times people are really just focus on you know like just taking shared hosting and tweaking it as much as you can to make it as fast as you can and, and it's like you know there's going to be a point where you can only go so much and, and I think that this has given you those tools the effort you'll see it when you come up with our solution next to, to eliminate some of those time-consuming staff tasks then the next thing is just the the advanced engineering capabilities you know like I think that you'll see in the solution that, that it does give you everything that you need and more and then the extended human operations and maintenance activities. It's like you got to make sure that you have the people, the staff, the training, everything available to keep up with things. And it's one thing that you're going to have to continue to do if you want to do all this yourself and do it the manual way. And for sure, this helps you to scale because imagine today you manage and you maintain 10 clusters, 10 production clusters. But what about tomorrow when you will need to manage and to maintain 1,000 clusters and to, to proceed continuously updates and continuously integrations and of course to, to be always up to date for you and for the infrastructure itself but also for your customers and your end users. This is very important. So if we if we want to, to control something small, it's okay, we can do it, we can share five uh, people team but uh, if we really want to scale and we want our business to grow we need to automate all of these processes we need to automate of course to avoid human errors but also to feel more confident and to win more opportunities and to reach more projects and definitely to deliver faster and faster projects and, and Theo I think you had a key thing also is, is what's going to happen tomorrow you know there's a lot of, of, of angst and, and curiosity about what's going to happen because of, of things are evolving so fast today with the whole end user experience, the introduction of artificial intelligence, things like that. So there's expected a lot of changes. So the more you have automated, the more that you have a solution that you can you know, make these updates faster, the more you know, ability you, you will be able to grow with the, you know, the demand of the customers in the end. Mm -hmm. For sure. And let's discuss a little bit about the solution now. Of course, we have a built-in special features to simplify the operations for the end users which is uh, auto scaling auto clustering and definitely we have the built-in database as a service but but uh, but we also maintain an application catalog that we deliver with different software stacks for example we have wordpress with lightspeed we have wordpress with nginx and we deliver also some packages that they are more tuned for specific use cases for example woocommerce and we have of course uh, wordpress clusters that they are production ready we do the testings the benchmarks the performance activities and of course we continue to tuning and improving our solution and also we have a technology 
which is very useful for to, to resource this, the infrastructure consumption. We can now auto hibernate the projects which they do not get requests, for example, for the last 24 hours. And this can be enabled for specific uh, cases, for example, for development environments, for staging environments. And of course, if we want to migrate some uh, non-used uh, very often projects from shared hosting, we can modernize them and we can put them on hibernation mode, which means for websites they are not being uh, visited very often, we just do not consume any resource and for this reason we can improve significantly the, the TCO. And we have also a uh, built-in technology that we will demonstrate you today that you can redeploy the whole image of course we can keep the data safe and without any impact so you can have always up to date the operating system but also the software stacks within it's also compatible with dockerized packaging which means you can fork and you can extend our images and you can configure your own solution within and of course your own tunings and or your own customizations and all of this we built it by our cloud scripting on our cloud framework we if we if have time on the end we will have a quick demo as well how you can access our core engine and how you can extend our framework based on your own needs and on your own strategy And for the business features, we have simplified management, we enable multi-cloud, so you can even migrate workloads from cloud to cloud, or you can have high availability between different clouds. It's centralized, so you can observe for high load spikes, you can see uh, for, for CPU spikes as well, all your clusters, all your clouds, everything within a single panel which of course will give you a better and most faster decisions on how you impact on, uh, on, on these containers they are producing errors. And of course we have built in a multi-billing method that you can extend your custom billing. Of course we have integrations as well, but based on our billing engine you can have uh, subscriptions, you can have uh, overused it for the network and disk space as well, but you can have also, also auto-scaling for the clustered environments. And for sure, the solution as it is multi-cloud ready, you can combine different offerings. For example, you can have your public cloud for end users to access as a self-service and configure and deploy their, their workloads, but also you can enable for special web agents or some for some private customers and enterprises, you can enable private cloud, which you can allow only the specific user to access and to to have visibility of this specific cluster but also you can offer on-premise uh, deployment so this kind of users they can accelerate from the development local to public cloud or even on private cloud and hybrid cloud as well everything all of this it's api driven it's full customizable no vendor login and you can connect it to any other system or third party integration as well. So we are speaking for a full stack platform which comes from the underlying infrastructure. It's offering a built-in virtualization layer with our system containers. Our system containers are different than the classic application containers we are listening in the few years now. It's about real virtualization, which means you do not need to worry about security issues for privileged or unprivileged configurations, but also it's in independent in compare of the, of the management itself. So you can even enable root access without to, to worry about security impacts. The users, they can even have custom installation softwares within with a traditional YAM or apt-get we are using by default the Red Hat family, but you can switch to Ubuntu as well if you want. And of course, all of this is coming with the Enterprise vSAN if you want to enable high availability even for the standalone containers with single instances. In case of hardware node failures, we auto fail over this to a healthy node automatically. And about the platform as a service, it's a self-service panel which will provide all the software stacks managed with auto-clustering 
auto scaling and of course we have also built in another technologies for content delivery network uh, and commercial web service like Lightspeed Enterprise with built-in security features like web application firewall DDoS protection and so on. And we have very promising roadmap about uh, commercial workers plugins. We are now releasing very soon Object Cast Pro. We will have also uh, WP acceleration by Cloud Linux. We will have some other security products that you can easily install, like Immunify. You will have Monarch Malware. All of these are confirmed, and we are going to deliver very soon. And we extend also with uh, website builder experience based on on WordPress and many many other things. They will coming very soon. The hardware requirements depends, of course, the use cases which means if you would like to have a public cloud so you can uh, you can target globally or on your specific uh, region uh, public customers of course we require the high availability for quality assurance for the orchestrator level which it needs two nodes by default and for the user nodes we suggest to start from five so it's going to be cluster friendly and highly available however for private use cases, for private clouds, when, for example, you do not need high availability for the orchestrator, this can exist only in one node, and even the user nodes can be flexible. You can have even single server management, however, without the clustered environments to be available for the end user, only standalone instances within all the software stacks deployed inside the VPS. But also you can have your own scaling later and you can enable these images as you grow. So you can have full flexible solution based on your own needs. And we have some available topologies that you can fork and you can create your own products, you can create your own pricing, and of course you can have a adhering model of, uh, based on the websites that the, the user creates. You can provide some automatic discounts. For now, we have a standalone instance, which means we have a vertical scaling only for a single VPS container. However, we provide this based on Nginx and on the light speed. Each time the user upgrades or resides a service plan, we go and automatically reconfigure everything based on new system resources and, of course, based on best practices. For example, we follow the CPU workers with the, the PHP processes and we follow the MySQL buffers based on the, on the new system resources and we always reconfigure this dynamically. For the cluster within the same data center, we have auto scaling with predefined triggers that it's been tested by our engineers for, for without impact to the application itself. And we have this uh, based on light speed because we casting the layer for the casting layer, we store this on the load balancing. And based on the light speed plugin, the load balancer is cluster friendly and uh, action aware which means it's time you update the content on the website or you have a purchase on WooCommerce, for example, the load balancing is automatically purging this content and it's always cluster uh, friendly, the caching layer. Imagine if you were storing the caching on the web servers and as you have multiple web servers, it can be inconsistent between the nodes and it can have different content as the caching executing on specific web server or you need to have a caching a document root on the cluster, for example, via NFS or you need to store it on the load balancer. Of course, to having uh, NFS layer on the caching, it's having some performance degradation. For this reason, based on best practices, is the best option to store the caching layer on the load balancer. And for the caching, I mean for the public class and the private class in the full page layer. Also, the Lightspeed Enterprise is WooCommerce friendly. It supports ECI by default, which is the edge sites includes, which it's utilizing the caching like a, a puzzle block blocks. So we can have a static caching and we can inject dynamically the dynamic blocks that it's been uh, triggered for uncast. And of course, we are using a Redis cluster for the object cache and depends on the architecture for example if you have a high availability of the underlying infrastructure based on our virtuoso storage you may have 
a storage layer only with one as it's highly available by default and we mount this by NFS or if you do not have underlying infrastructure with high availability on the storage layer then we can make auto clustering with cluster FS and we have high availability based on different physical nodes and on the database layer we have by default a scheme by Galera on MariaDB which is more easy to maintain, to operate and to recover. It's multi-multi-master based on synchronous replication. However, if you want to enable another scheme, we support even a, a primary secondary or primary primary and you can have auto scaling as well with all the data operations built-in features, diagnostics, and recovery too. And for very enterprise applications, and most likely when they want to reach a very high quality of levels, for example, a high availability with no single point of failure, even on the data center level, or to reach new markets, to have geo distribution and so on, we support multi-cloud deployments which is coming with multi-layer from an application delivery network, which is acting like a global load balancer. And also we have a built-in within the data center load balancers as well, which they acting like a round robin. And of course we scale uh, within the data center, the computing based on the request and the load that has been routed through for the cluster FS and the file system replication, we utilizing a geo replication based on cluster FS, we deploy this automatically and we have again uh, diagnostics about the healthy of this uh, asynchronous replication. And for the database, we have Galera cluster within the data center for master, master, master again. However, we replicate asynchronous based on different Galeras, based on binary logging and on master, master or master slave, depends on the topology we would like to create. For the back end and for the images, we have specific rules on the load balancers that we, we request your users to specific the master region so you can always upload content on the master region and we replicate this for best practices and of course to be more easy for you to to operate the multi-region distributed cluster and uh, next we can jump to the demo let me switch my screen a bit good I hope you see my screen. So uh, it's coming with two different panels, of course, with the cluster administration panel and with the end user dashboard. The cluster administration, as we already said, is centralized and multi-cloud. So you can have a full visibility about your cluster workloads, how many environments they are running, the containers that they are running, and of course, what stacks it's been loaded so you can have full visibility your users what they prefer for light speed nginx and so on and next we have the regions i will go to this uh, demo very quickly on high level so in details we will have another demo or you can ask a private demo if you want from our team so on the regions you can have a multi-cloud enablement you can migrate workloads from region to region in some cases and based on specific hardware requirements and network configuration we can also support live migration between for example from aws to azure the region is being created through the user interface you can have a different private networks between different regions it depends now for external network you can uh, you can enable also external IP addresses to specific project and container itself because our system containers can have external network attached on it. Uh, however, to migrate from uh, region to region with a zero impact and without your customers to need to reconfigure DNS records, you can utilize our built-in CNAME provision or a name. So you do not need to maintain or to manage IP records on the customer side DNS. For the hosts, we have uh, you can have different hardware groups within the same region, which it can be, for example, availability zones. These zones can have a 
the same networking so you do not need to have additional uh, overheads about reconfigure software stacks where to to be their entry point and so on and also you can have different hardware groups according to hardware specifications for example for high performance or lower performance and you can also have different pricings and different strategy based on these different groups as well for better management and uh, to reduce operations you can easily evacuate the containers from specific node to another node of course when you have multiple nodes within the same region on evacuation you will have the ability to select specific nodes or multiple nodes as well and also here you can add a specific status for example the active uh, it can be converted to maintenance when it's on maintenance we do not distribute any more containers on this node and for for load rating here we have a special algorithm which we understand the available disk space the available cpu the allocated cpu also the available memory and so on and we distribute the containers accordingly so we have our built-in algorithms for the best practices and best distributions of workloads between your clusters. If you want to extend uh, VPN networks via IPsec, we have again simplified these operations. You need just to configure the neighbors, the left end point and the right, we, and we simplify this process so you can have private networks between even multiple cl clouds. And now about the management, we have the environments. Environment, it can be a production, uh, basically one project on WordPress, we have by default a production environment, we have a staging environment as well, and you can enable if you want a third one, a development environment. By default, we have production and staging. So the environment, in, it can maybe have a single container, a single VPS, or it can have a clustered environment with multiple uh, containers within for example like this we have the load balancers the web servers the databases redis and nfs storage so here we can migrate the full environment between the regions or different hardware groups or we can migrate a container between different nodes within the same hardware group the migration supports offline migration or online migration as well with online migration you have zero impact even the system uptime on the operating system it remains the same so the user does not be aware for any maintenance activity operations and so on for the for your platform operators we have also easy uh, web ssh directly through the cluster administration it can open like a pop-up window or it can open also a new tab as well so you can have uh, easy access and quickly debugs on, on behalf of some of your customers you can also filter by specific criteria about the status which are one of running or some other criteria and of course you can filter by specific user as well now that was about the environments we have, on the next step we have the nodes the nodes in now we have visibility all our clusters at once from single panel but however we can filter between different hosts or we can select multiple hosts as well here we have a visibility of the running containers and we can sort by specific criteria for example by cpu we can sort by memory so we can see see which container consume the most uh, memory and of course it supports also networking iops disk utilization and of course we can see the the virtualization type the environment which this container belongs and of course the owner of the container again we can migrate from here between nodes offline and online and we can have web ssh access the IP pools, it's in reality, we configure by default the private networking. Automatically and behind the scenes, we have uh, policies on network which we do not allow to communicate environment by environment. So we do not have a packet sniffing and all of these problems that the shared hosting it have. And in reality, here, anytime you include an environment within 
a specific group by default we allow this automatically for example uh, when you will have a production environment and staging environment we enable communication between these two but if you have multiple projects we, you cannot communicate between different projects these projects they need to be included in the same group and after we allow the networking which means you do not need to create policies the end users they do not need to create policies and advanced firewall configurations we do this behind the scenes automatically external ip addresses they can be useful as well you can enable or disable this by default and of course you can add from the user interface specific ranges and you can allocate this to specific regions and we also support ipv6 the templates are being managed by us uh, you can have your own docker who is scanning for SVs, svs and also here you can we can enable some custom templates if you want based on your own needs <clears throat> now the groups they are coming with trial by default you can enable based on uh, 14 days or based on specific uh, credits so it's gonna be like a, a money driven trial and we have this by you can have this by default enabled or deactivated and next we have a, a based on on the groups you can have also available regions which means if you have some private customer you can create a new group and you can enable to, uh, and make available specific private clouds for example and also on-premise deployments hybrid clouds and so on and on each group you can have also different prices as well which means you can have the default group but maybe you you have some uh, uh, reseller partners and so on you can have some discounts and you can have different pricing according to different use cases different regions different clouds different hardware groups and so on however and also the group it can it have its own quotas the quotas are responsible for example the grace period about uh, how many days to destroy the environment uh, how many environments they can create about network performance if you have enabled sent mail for built-in email delivery and many many other things however uh, initially the user is get these quotas by the by the group itself but you can go individually to to clients and you can tune the quotas based on for only this user account on the billing and uh, here we will stay a little bit to give you a clear understanding how it works and after i will switch to the end user so here you can create your own products you can have as many products you want you can name it exactly as you want so you do not limit about your own strategy and as we name for example wordpress lightspeed we can after have a, <clears throat> a service plan we can create a service plan for this product and we can fork it by our certified templates for example we can start with the basic we can get the standalone pro which it includes lightspeed the software stacks we have full documentation of what we have installed on specific uh, uh, naming on our image so you can see which one they are with nginx and which one are they with lightspeed for example and here you can of course uh, uh, activate this or to have it as draft you can enable also multiple projects within the same plan so the user can have or one or hundred or thousands of websites uh, within the same service plan you can configure also the grace period and of course you can have here uh, the pricing for a month or per year you can have currencies as well multiple currencies and of course you can enable some uh, automatic discounts for example from the first website to the 10th website the price is going to be 20 dollars from the 10th website the price is going to be 18 dollars and from the third website we can have 15 dollars per website 
so the user can find some automatic discounts and this is very uh, attractive one and about the package itself you can come here and you we can say the cloud let's about 16. For the cloud let's I do not know if you are aware about Virtuoso application platform but we have a measure that is called a cloudlet. One cloudlet is equal with 128 megabytes of memory or 400 megahertz of CPU power, which means you can, uh, this is the default values, or you can customize this based on your own needs. However, for example, here the 16 cloudlets, it will be two gigabytes of memory. And next we can have the disk space, 100 gigabyte and traffic, one terabyte and you can create a service plan so i think i spent more time than it's supposed on the cluster administration i'm sorry about that let me switch to the end user so it's coming with a dual mode with light and dark mode as well <clears throat> you can create a project yeah i just want to give a few more minutes and then you know get into some questions i will have seven minutes for this so we will spend about 10 minutes and we can extend five minutes for the questions yes so the user can select the region here automatically we adapt based on available regions we automatically built and we create the map, which means if you operating only in Europe, we will show Europe. If you operating only, for example, in Germany, we show Germany. But as you extend more than one continent, we are starting to have the international map. For the pricing, uh, as we've seen, we can have multiple products as we create the WordPress, for example. We can have multiple service plans. For example, here I'm already subscribed with one possible website on standard. This I've reached my limits. But I'm subscribed already on Pro. I have 10 available websites which I'm using the two. And I can create the project here. Or I can extend another plan. I can subscribe, for example, on the business. And now I can apply the subscription here and I can create the project. Once we create the project, we have the summary, we have the WordPress version, the PHP version. Here we can redeploy. Re For example, I will do it on the project one. We have PHP 8.2.5 and I will downgrade to PHP 2.8.2.1. The process is going to be uh, on the background and in the meantime we can continue uh, work on the project three we have data center information where is this located how we can access the ssh and sftp and also we have the database information we can access via php my admin we do this automatically uh, we deliver the credentials into the user mailbox. We can always reset the password. However, here I can go to my WP config and I can get them through the WordPress configuration file. Getting the user. It's already there, sorry, and the password. And I can access the PHP my admin. I can have access to the database. And uh, next we have uh, the statistics here. It's about real time for CPU, memory, network, and storage. For network, we have also for inbound, outbound, and internal, external too. And for storage, we have the disk utilization and also the IOPS that is being used about the performance. On the file management, we have some favorites here. You can have uh, the php.ini, for example, so the end users, they can configure its own criteria here and to enable or disable some extensions. By default, we have it production ready, so the users, they do not need to tune something here. However, if you have some specific requirements, the customer can come here and configure its own memory limits or PHP execution times and so on. We planning to have this more user friendly by the next releases with specific uh, forms and fields so they cannot make human errors here, but it's on the roadmap for Q3. And uh, next we have uh, <clears throat> we have uh, also the plugins. 
that we we can now manage the WordPress plugins from the dashboard itself. We can update. We can delete also activate deactivate some of them. And uh, for the project settings, we have a custom domain. We can configure our external endpoint, external domain. We can bind it to this project, which means now we can deliver this through our shared load balancers. So the customer needs to configure only a C name or a name on this endpoint. And after, they do not need to have external IP address. If this project it goes with external IP address, uh, uh, available then we can just create an a record based on our dns management so we have uh, the project one it got redeployed now it's based on php 8.2.1 it fetch new images configured uh, latest image later operating system and also different php version as well so we are also ssl installations we support built-in Let's Encrypt. The customer need to configure in advance the DNS records, so the Let's Encrypt with auto validate, validate the process, and we can simplify install this, or the customer can attach its own commercial custom SSL. The backup storage. Here the user, uh, basically, we support backups on the container level, out of the box, on the service level, on the service provider level, so you can have your own backups. However, you can give also control to the end user to configure its own backup strategy, its own rotation, and also, uh, of course, the, the schedule, if it's hourly, daily, or weekly and monthly. And, of course, for international customers, when they have different time zones, they can configure its own strategy for their backup process. So let me install here a daily one. I also select our, the backup storage that I have created in advance. I will show you in a bit there because you can upsell backup storage. You can have a, a bundle in for free. You can have, for example, 10 gigabytes for free. You can oversell the over usage or even you can offer more like 100 gigabytes free. Basically, it's your own strategy. You can configure anything you want. And once the user configures the plugin, of course, it can change the strategy again. It reconfigure. They can manually back up anytime based on their own control. And of course, they can restore too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I will continue during the backup process to show you a few other things. Uh, on system settings, we have again SSL management. Here it's centralized because you can have multi-sun SSLs and also wildcard SSLs, which you can bind on multiple environments. You can have also Git configuration with authentication or without, with token or SSH key. The SSH key can be configured by the user settings. We will show it in a bit. And for the backup storage, we can add additional backup storages as well. And it can be on different regions for best practices and based on DR. And of course, you can allow multiple subscriptions too. You can have free, you can have premium, and as well here too. So the backup process is finished. We will show in a bit how we can restore it. And on the user settings, we have SSH access key. For example, here I have my public key, so I can connect through this SSH gateway. Let me show you how it works very quickly. So I can go to my terminal and I can copy paste this one. I'm accessing now to the gateway. Uh, uh, if you see here, I can see my projects again and I have a command line, for example, to enter via the CLI on the environment project one, I need to execute the eight. Next, I can see the containers. For example, here I can see the application server. I can execute the two. And after it's giving me access directly to the container, I can do anything I want to directly from a centralized gateway. So it means with one gateway, one access key, you can control all your environments. Let me switch back. 
you about ready for questions, Theo? <laughs> or you want another couple of minutes? Got a few more. Uh, yes, we can start the, the QA. Just last thing to show you. Here we have the production environment, but we can switch to staging. We can copy from production. It's now creating a new environment. It's cloning basically our production to staging. It's starting the cloning process. We have different endpoints. So for example, the production now, it's here the custom domain on the summary, but in reality it's listed as well in this one. So you, you can have a, some uh, quick visibility how it works and on the staging it's having different url so it's different environment at all different container it's not like we copy a document route and we create a virtual host or something like this which means you can for example redeploy the staging to latest php to different databases you can test you you can do development you can do your own uh, analysis and after you can convert it back to production. Uh, we, we it took a little bit more time than expected. I'm really sorry about this. Uh, we have more things to see. I think it's good to see some cloud scripting how you can integrate more things. But uh, you can reach us. We can have private demo, or we can have another webinar later with more technical and deep drift technologies aspect. Definitely. So, so I do have a, a few questions that I'll jump into now. So first one is, you know, can we can can you configure multiple environments under the same project? You know, so you know, although they're hosted on different servers, can you do it all under the same project? Uh, I didn't understand very well the question. Yes, you can have production, you can have staging, and you can extend to development as well. If it's multi-region deployment, we automatically inject all of these environments under one project, yes. Okay. And then if anybody has any clarification, any other questions, just chime in also. I'll chime back in. So the next one is, uh, you know, you talked a little bit about the, the actual plugins, things like that, and how you can you know, basically add, delete, things like that. Can you restrict problematic plugins? We have this on the roadmap, not only to restrict, but also to suggest based on use cases, for example, favorites plugins, and you will be able to offer this to your clients based on your own strategy as well, yes. Okay, and, and I guess, also, so say um, there is uh, something that you, you, a project you created in January, and there's you know some type of security vulnerability found in March, found on Nginx or another component. How um, you know how is this updated? You know, is this something that that's done automatically? Is it you know do you know which ones need to be updated? How does it? move forward with, with this. So for critical vulnerabilities, uh, when they are coming to operating system, we automatically patch this from the system itself. Because it's we are banging the kernels, everything we do this by default. For software stacks within that if you want to redeploy to latest teammates about to, to be more updated if they have some vulnerability, for example, on Nginx patch and so on, you can redeploy. We have this always up to date, which means you get a new operating system updated and also all the software stacks updated we redeploy everything it's like you deploy a new server from scratch and just we keep your viable data of course all the others it's been uh, reconfigured from scratch okay and then um can a customer's account be, be provisioned automatically with no admin intervention Correct, correct. When the, this is the trial, you can have trial as well. They, we have upgrade process, so they can convert from trial to billing. Uh, you can have this enabled by default or disabled. If you have disabled the trial, for example, you can give still access to the panel, but you can limit specific resources and environment. For example, you can have trial only with uh, 512 megabyte, one environment only for demo, for limited with SSH access and all of this is, you can have as well these two. 
Okay, and for now, at least unless anybody else has any other questions, I say the best for last is is how you know how can they start trying it out? Like, what's the ability to get a trial and, and start playing with the actual tool? So first of all, we can give you access to our demo so you can test it and you can try it. Uh, next, we have uh, multiple options about how you can deploy the orchestrator. So the initial deployment needs the orchestrator, and after you can extend your regions based on, on your own self-service management as well. The orchestrator now depends the use case, if it's for private use, if you need high availability, or if it's for public use, this it, it's, uh, it will uh, impact the whole deliveries in the process. We can have a hosted orchestrator, so you can extend your own premises and user nodes from our centralized management, or you can also deploy the orchestrator on your cloud, on your premises too. Okay. It's quickly, yeah. depends your strategy. It can take from two to three days up to seven days, two weeks, depends of course if you want to have some uh, consultancy about the subscriptions, what to implement and what to have bundle in, what to upsell and some other commercial activities that it's been need to be configured for your public lands and for the commercial activities. And to everybody, I think the main idea is uh, if you want anything, any follow-up, um, demos, more detail, uh, you'll, you'll receive an email, you'll let us know, you know, we can set you up with a, additional meetings, one-on-ones, and then on top of it, you know, the different trial, make sure you have access. So anything else, any closing comments? Other than that, I definitely thank everybody for joining today and look forward to having some more discussions. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a nice day, thank you. Bye-bye.